Mm. That was a hefty one. That was strong crack. We should we should start a rate rate this crack. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have people coming in from all different, <laughs> yeah, from all sorts yeah. of different walks of life. Yeah. A lot of different cracks out it's there. One crack. Everybody knows the rules. <laughs> <laughs> little pizza review. Yeah. One bite, everyone knows the rules. This is the uh, Lazy Lover from our friends down at the Revelry Brewing Company. A Belgian blonde ale. Shit is off the chain. This is one of my favorite beers. Off the chain. 7%. So. Boy, that thing's strong. We're getting lit. Yeah. Speaking of getting lit, <laughs> let's get in on some Travion Williams here. Travion. You got an, another 5.9er, 200er. <laughs> Seems to be a lot of these guys in this draft here, but some good stuff about Travion. Sure. What uh what what did you what was your general take on his kind of background? The background, like I like the background. Yeah, it's me good, too. Strong background. The F is for family. Right. Cares a lot about his family. He was raised by his grandfather, who unfortunately died when he was the age of six. Yeah. Uh, Travion was six, not his grandfather, obviously. <laughs> Um, his aunt and uncle took him in at that time, it basically became his parents. He ended up calling them mom and dad. And that's why he decided to play for A&M because he wanted to stay home, it's stay from the near Houston home, area. Right. was from Houston. Uh, his family, they, they got all their stuff was lost in the hurricane Harvey that, that came through Houston. And, you know, he, he has a good quote where he's talking about how material, materialistic things can be replaced, but family is everything to him. So right. he, he cares about family. That's what he plays for. There's a video on YouTube called deep water, which is like a little bit of more of his aunt and uncle side of like what happened during right. that. And they kind of went to sleep and woke up and his grand or his aunt was, or uncle was like, there's, there was just water just coming in from the walls. Right. They didn't want to evacuate. They had right. to be, uh, airlifted out of there. He couldn't contact them. He was freaking out. And, and yeah. eventually they got to a hotel and were able to call him and settle everything down. But so, but good, I mean, good character good, guy. Good, good character traits to start it off. Don't let the uh, the hairdo fool you. <laughs> he's got this one <laughs> he little. One little uh, he's been growing that thing for a while. For sure. I think he probably <laughs> flat irons that thing down in the morning. <laughs> everything. He's not flat iron. Everything else he's goes up. Tough. He's way too tough for a flat iron. Maybe just some product then. <laughs> he's doing something. <laughs> He's got a little Odell thing kind of going on. A if little he starts bit. wearing dangly earrings. Yeah. Although, looks good at the press conference. Talks sure. well at the press conference. So I like all those things. Got to keep it fresh. Let's get into the numbers here. Good numbers. Good numbers. So we'll start off with he was tied for fifth in rushing TDs in the NCAA with 18. Uh, sixth in rushing attempts with 271. So 5'9", 200 guy showing you... Some toughness there, sixth in total attempts, and a lot of not, attempts. Not a lot of injury to speak of uh, during his career. Yeah, the, you can only really find an in injury, an ankle injury in seventeen. He missed a game and a half. So you would say one is possibly durable. Um, third in rushing yards with seventeen uh, sixty. That's six point five. Six point five yards per carry. Six point five yards per carry. Third in the SEC. Hmm. Um, and then the market share for this guy was 33.13, which is third out of all junior running backs. And only seven players have a higher total market share for him. Around 30 is when you've, you know, really had a, a big percentage of your team's workload. So we got a true bell cow back in the SEC. Yeah. And when you look at everything else that was going on with AM, there wasn't, you know, they lost Christian Kirk, they lost Ratley, uh, they have Stone uh, Sternburner. Sternburner. Which. He'll be fun when he comes out. He's he looks like very studly at the tight end position, um, but no really other backs to speak of. They had a, a freshman running back in there that looked all right at times, um, and then the quarterback situation is Mond has got some traits, but it's not. He's got all the traits. Not the best quarterback situation. Definitely a big improvement from seventeen to eighteen. Watching him throw the ball, he's got a hell of a fastball and he can run. Kind of Kaepernicky. Very Kaepernicky. He's got a live arm. That thing, he can make all the throws. He just doesn't make them well. Right. Not that it matters for Travion, but I think Sternburner's coming out. Is he coming out this year? Yeah. He's, he, well, he's, in, he's in the listing here on DLF tight ends. Well, he's strong receiving tight end. He's basically their go-to receiver. Is that the Devi? Because they got older. They got like 2020 20 eligible guys on there, 2021. 20, well, they got with their rankings, like, the, you know... Um, those are just rookie rankings. Yeah, rookie okay. rankings. And they, have they declared it. They took Brian off for the for the wide receiver when he decided he was going back for Carolina. So uh, 
Speaking right. of All Carolina, right. you got Deion Sanders some today. Uh, that was awesome. I mean, if nothing else, uh, <laughs> one of them. With they uh, the local news, I was at my parents' house the other night, and Rick Henry, the local sports guy for uh, uh, ch- the Columbia area, Does he, he sell cars there too. It sounds like a- no. He he's been he's been sportsing it up for at least three decades, as long as I can remember. Um, Dad's one of those guys. He watches the news every night. Wouldn't miss it for the world. And uh, especially the sports at the very end, looking out for his Gamecocks. Mm. Rick Henry goes. Uh, he's at the at the uh, uh, Super Bowl, and he catches up with Dion, and he's asking, "Hey, Dion, we just you know your son just came over to Carolina, and he goes, how come he picked Carolina?" And Dion goes, "Why not?" <laughs> Rick Henry goes, "Works for me." And then Dion <laughs> tried to walk <laughs> off, and he goes, "Hey, hey, hey." <laughs> Sticks a microphone right back in his face. He goes, hey, we're going to be able to see you around williams Bryce this year. We're going to see you in Columbia. How much? How, how much are we going to see you in Columbia? So the local guy's looking out for us. Dion did hit back with a really, really good response. So he's like, I coach my other son's high school football team, so i got to be a good dad. I'll be around as much Multiple as I can. Multiple obligations. And, and, and he was like, yeah, and I do have a show on Sunday mornings. <laughs> so Dion with a super good comeback on the cusp. Uh, but he's not going to be in Columbia very often. That's no, what I'm taking. Basically, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> why would you? why wouldn't you want? Yeah, good for a Gamecocks. Well, Travion was a mainstay at College Station. You did that. You brought up I South did. Carolina. I did. That was my bad. <laughs> a little Super Bowl <laughs> recap. Um, so but he back to Travion. He did break the single season rushing record for the Aggies, uh, which was previously held by. Darren Lewis, I think, with 600, 6, 1,692 yards. Just did that off the top of my head. So somewhere around there. Don't pretty close. Approximately. Yeah. But uh, so great, great season all around for him. I think this was a was a pretty solid outing from 17 to 16. Uh, he What was his career catch? 60, 66. 66 uh, career receptions, which is, is very solid. A good good part of his game 27 nice to, last year. you're gonna need that with the two when you're in the 200 club sure and we were talking about off air <laughs> the 200 club <clears throat> we were talking about off air the uh the fact that mon the quarterback there could have hit him a bunch oh, for more. sure should have checked him down multiple other times yeah he'd um, rather just throw it awkwardly out of bounds but for sure so the total in in seventh or 18 for Travion Williams was uh, 1760, 271 attempts, 6.5 yards, and 18 touchdowns. So overall, uh, caught 27 of 39 targets for 278 yards and a touchdown. Overall, nice 18 for old Travion. Absolutely. You take it to 17, though. You take it to 17, and which like when I got into the 17 tape and first got into Travion, there was some hype around him. Some people have been getting excited about him, and I, I was watching the 17 tape, and I'm just sitting there with my arms crossed, shaking my head, going, what are we doing? I know. You, text, <laughs> you texted me. I got a text from Casey, and I was like, I hope the Travion's 18 is much better than the 17 because I'm not that impressed. Right. So it's the 17 tape is, is meh. But you had that ankle injury. Did have a little ankle injury. Missed a game and a half. He, he relies on those ankles. Right. He's a cutter. So in 17, he uh, he had 173 attempts for 798 yards, averaged 4.6, and had eight touchdowns. Take away that UCLA game, though. What The huge game to start off against UCLA in the first game of the season, which I believe they ranked uh, 117th in uh, yep. run defense. Total run defense. This yards allowed. Right. So we already knew that UCLA wasn't a great run defense. He rushes for 200 yards against those guys. And I, I think he only eclipsed 100 yards one on other time. one other time. Against in, Auburn. Against Auburn. So so not terrible. But if you kind of maybe prorate that back down to like 100 yards versus UCLA. And I mean, Dan, they used the same. The, the three plays that he busted off against UCLA were pretty much the same damn running play with different pullers on one of the three plays. And they just kept gashing him with it. Because UCLA is useless at stopping the run in 17. Uh, we, we went over this with Penny and Daryl Henderson. So we're yep. very familiar with bashing UCLA's run <laughs> defense. Um, and if you take that away, 17 would have been gross. Right. The yards per carry would not be good. So, But the big thing for me, the biggest takeaway for Tra- well, Travion as far as like kind of coming down to his personality and the what kind of a guy he is, is what happened from 17 to 18. Now you get... Kevin Sumlin, who's been there, mainstay in College Station for a while. 
They show him the door. Jimbo Fisher takes over. So just a big fundamental change of what's going on at A&M. Like you went from, you know, trying to do all the trendy stuff, spread it out, go as fast as you can. Kevin Sumlin holding up cards on the side, doing those kind of things to a Jimbo Fisher, which is traditionally just a pro style offense, you know, two tight ends, eye formation. There's a fullback showing up all of a sudden. Uh, you know, more man blocking gap scheme. They, they typically did a, more zone stuff uh, under someone. So just big changes all around. And when you go from 17 to uh, 18 and watch the tape, like I think Travion made great strides. And this is a guy who probably his entire maybe football career was more of doing kind of stuff that Sumlin was doing rather than stuff that you know, Jimbo Fisher was doing in that pro style, maybe when he was in peewees and they were running, you know, 24 dives or, you know, yeah. 46 trap or, you know, whatever. But throughout his high school and college career, it was probably a lot more spread it out and do this thing. So to see the versatility of him and the work ethic to come in and learn all this new stuff. And granted, the whole team had to do this. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that that tells you a lot about what Travion Williams is. And he looked great in this new system of what was going on with uh, the pro style and Jimbo and the two tight ends and s some more man schemes and I formation. And, you know, that's just, just a different running. A lot of you could, could have been extremely discouraged. Like this doesn't fit my style. This isn't what I'm going to do. Like I'm not, I'm not feeling this. It could have been an atrocious 18. Sure. Now to be fair in 17, the line wasn't super great. 18, they, they signed some, some, good recruits and the offensive line made really good strides. So much better from 17 to 18 line play wise. So we've got to average some of that in there. Still not the best. You definitely can, can point out plenty of spots where people are missing their assignments and, and leading to Trevion getting blown up a few times. Uh, but I mean, you got to love what he did from 17 to 18, the 271 carries. You mentioned right. sixth in the nation in he attempts. Was a lot of their offense, which is where that market share comes from. Right. Just impressive to, impressive to see all those carries. Uh, and then, you know, we didn't talk about 16. He came in as a true freshman, rushed for over 1,000 right. yards on a very efficient 156 attempts, average 6.8 a carry. Uh, only true freshman to break a thousand yards in Texas A&M history, so he came out of the gates very hot. Uh, we mentioned the seventeen down year, and then to bounce back with with a really strong eighteen. Mm -hmm. um, so, do you want to get into some of the things well, you like about Travion? Or what, yeah, what? well, just a little bit more on, on what was going on in in eighteen. Like they didn't they didn't completely go away from everything that they were doing in seventeen. They did do a whole lot more pro style stuff, but. Uh, Dan Dickey or Daryl Dickey, sorry, was the is the OC who used to be at Memphis, and we talked about that offense um, last week with yep. Daryl Henderson, and it's much more wide open, up tempo kind of thing. But in an interview that I watched with him, he was talking about how you know they're get, they want to keep some of the up tempo because they're already a little bit used to it. But it wasn't to just be like let's go as fast as we can. It's to dictate pace of the game. When we want to pick it up, we can pick it up, and when we want to go down to slow it down and go more pro style. Cause when you look at Kevin Sumlin's pace of play and Jimbo Fisher's pace of play, they're like, I think it was like 27 to like 22 seconds per, you know, different plays, which doesn't seem like a lot, but at the end of the day, decent amount of time, uh, between those two plays, uh, sure. play callers in you know, time spent in between plays or 20% drop that adds up to finish off this, about the the type of guy the kid is jay wayne mentioned as a true freshman got over a thousand yards and first in team history to do that and then maybe it was the ankle injury that dropped him down as a sophomore but as a freshman he gets almost 19 catches over a thousand yards averaging almost seven yards a carry lighten it up to go through a struggling season like that and then come back in a scheme change and have that junior mm -hmm. year and then i'm sure most people have seen it but if you didn't the letter that he wrote to Texas A&M and the fans and the community and everybody that to, when he decided to go pro, like it was about as genuine as you've seen from anybody right. deciding to leave school. It wasn't like he threw up the deuces and said, Hey, I'm headed for a paycheck. Like this was a very sincere hate to do this, but just, you know, and, and you know, a lot of, a lot of, have, a lot of athletes have to say this is best thing for my family, but the way he worded it, you could tell he really appreciated the family at Texas A&M maybe, you know, being an, extent, being an extended family and uh, kind of, 
goes back to what you started with about the character right. of the character of the man and you put that together with a slumping sophomore season after he was probably the big man on campus coming off that freshman season sure to turn it around and be able to do what he did junior year i i, I think yeah. that sums up his character very well a hundred percent so i think he's rounding into being you know a guy that we all in the room right now like a good bit just before we even get into talking about the traits and, and one more thing with the jimbo sumlin transition they did keep also keep some shotgun stuff it wasn't just all traditional uh eye formation eye formation power. pro style stuff they, they did again keep tempo and keep uh shotgun stuff and kept the quarterback runs and kind of that kind of stuff involved in what's going on so he didn't come in and just be like no we're not doing any of that so he kept some of that in there but still to, adds to, to the versatility for sure. because not only is that still in the playbook now, all the pro style stuff's in right. the playbook with the two tight ends and all the pulls and everything else. All right. So let's get into kind of what makes Travion really. What's what's the what did you see? What are the good traits um or bad that you saw out of Travion, uh, Jay Wayne? Well, I guess I'll start with the biggest question that I have is is just with the size and the ability to grind. Mm -hmm. uh, that's always, you know, we're looking for a three down back. We're looking, that's why we're just stabbing at a bunch of running backs. We're always looking for the guy who can become a next three down back. I don't know if he can really be a grinder. He he, he did some grinding in 18 for Texas A&M, absolutely. Right. And I'm very six impressed. Total, six in the nation in attempts. Right, and, and I'm impressed with his toughness. Uh, I think that I think that he showed a pretty solid ability to do it. So he he reminds me a little. I hate I hate comps like mostly because of the people giving comps. <laughs> They're usually the worst. Um, but this guy does kind of remind me of Philip Lindsay. I don't know if that's maybe Ooh. some of the some of the shifts in like the the late. Jay Wayne's boy he sees him <laughs> and everybody just went size comp on me. <laughs> I did, it's a decent size comp. He is a little bit bigger than Philip Lindsay. Better, bigger framed, bigger framed, and but, a little but, taller. But Philip runs a lot bigger than he is. Uh, and, and I think Trevion does as well. I think we did a bunch of film review before we started this uh, together. We, use, we, we do our own film review, and we got into some of the plays and looking at some of the toughness. toughness. You see him evolve in 18 to being able to, to finish runs. Right. That's one of the big things I have is from 17 to 18, like the finishing of runs really improved in my opinion. Right. So my initial impression was that he can't grind, and, and slowly as I've watched more and more, film which i've watched all the games you can find haven't probably watched them as multiple times as you have i've watched some of them uh, uh se several times but the more i watch the more you can see his ability to get through the hole and and it's i like to think that he's got good vision i, I was pegging him for good vision mm -hmm. we went back and forth on basically patience and feet footwork which yeah. i know you'll talk to here um, and whether it's a combination of all of that, sure. it, it works out well in his favor. He's usually pushing forward for some extra yards. Uh, he's usually, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not sold on grinding, but I'm not going to say that he can't because I've seen people of his stature do it in the NFL, and I've yeah. seen him do it in the SEC. Right. So I'm, Which is, I'm trying we gave, to come around. We gave Benny Snow a lot of credit for running in the SEC, and obviously they're they're Kentucky, not Texas A and M, and they don't have you know Jimbo Fisher. So Kentucky A and M's had some big seasons and you know a lot of uh, success, whereas Kentucky not necessarily not the so case much. when you think about them. But he was kind of their whole in a Benny Snellish kind of way. They were playing in the SEC, and he was a lot of their offense. Right, and he usually turned a profit for at least a couple yards, and and he definitely wasn't like a Marlon Mack habitual bouncer. He doesn't. No. I don't have any concerns about that, even though he does have quickness to get to the edge. So I, I don't know. I said a lot of things there. What, what's your what's yeah. your favorite thing about? Well, I, I'm not going to disagree with the vision. I don't I don't think it's top tier. I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I, I sometimes in the on the second level there's maybe not as much vision as I would, I would like to see. I do think he does a good job of setting setting plays up. I would say power probably not his game, but right. again, I think he did a good job of There are examples of him ha having some it. power, but it's not it's not going to be what he does. It's not going to be his calling card. Right. Uh but I do think he got much better at finishing runs. I thought he looked a little soft sometimes in the 17 tape. Uh, and then 18 I like the versatility uh, as far as like I there was there was gap and man run plays and there were zone run plays and he was having success on both and he was doing what he was supposed to do on both whether it's out of eye formation where he's following his fullback through the hole and 
either exhibiting different times to use his burst and his patience and then exploding or when the zone blocking would come out he'd be able to go inside or outside zone and be able to use his patience and his vision and then on top of that what really makes him great is you then you put the lateral agility and the burst on top of that and that's what makes him the player that i started to slowly really turn the tide on from being like nah, i don't know about this guy to this guy's pretty interesting yeah. um I'm not I don't know if I'm sold on the top I don't know that he has top tier burst or acceleration uh, you know o- like and the lateral agility I feel like is okay but the patience that that you see time and time yeah. again of him just letting things develop and then and then I mean pretty decent burst I yeah. don't know like I'm not so sure that he's going to increase his stock once he goes to the combine I feel like I think he'll have a pretty good combine yeah, yeah. I, I, I do think he's got... I think the burst is pretty good. I love the lateral agility. I think it's very good. I think he's got good kind of start-stop, and then, then the patience is is top-notch to go along with the footwork, which all kind of boils down to having to be have, have some vision and some forethought of what's about to happen, but I do think he does a good job of changing up his stride, shortening things up. It's not always big, long strides. He can pitter-patter and then use his lateral agility to lean one way, set something up, and then explode the other way. The, He's the, really good at setting things up. The high-end long speed isn't incredible. You see him get caught from uh, But I don't think it's bad. I think he's got a nice 0 to 40-yard speed, which how? what else do you need, really? Yeah. In the NFL, how many runs are going longer than 40 yards? Not a ton. <laughs> um, Not a ton. You do see him get caught from behind on sure. really long runs. From I, time I haven't to time, seen but. any running backs yet that we've watched, and we're only about eight in right. that haven't gotten caught from behind. I mean, and maybe well, there's some Daryl Henderson, but he's also just not having to worry about anything running through these ginormous holes and just he's out. Like, and yeah. I think a lot of these other guys are they're not just running in a straight line, accelerating as fast as you possibly can, um, and just and just going for it because you are still trying to set things up downfield, or at least if you're any good at you know the next set of guys that you're trying to set up you don't want to just go full full bore all the time because you might need to set up the next set of blocks and or downfield cuts yeah I, so i think he's really good in the open field when he when he gets out there i think he lets his blocks develop yeah he shows that type of ability behind the line of scrimmage as well right you see him press the line you see you see him press like that's nice and it sets up like outside runs we're going to get a little into that a little bit on Patreon. We're going to show some videos, as we mentioned. Um, but we're, we're going to show you some examples of that where, he, where he, he's planning to get the edge, but he sets that up right. in really, really nice ways. There's very subtle. Right, and it's it's subtle. Mm-hmm. Like you, Unless you're paying attention, right. you're not really going to notice it. Um, but the, the subtle changes of direction to get defenders off balance is pretty top-notch. Yeah, so for, for me, the combination of, uh, like you said, there's – a lot of these backs all have traits that are that are good. They all have all these traits that we're talking about, and we're going to talk about them, the base, the vision and the balance and the burst and all that other. We're going to talk about every single running back that comes through here. Right. But the the thing is <laughs> is when you can when you can put a set of traits together and link them together on plays. And I I think with the patience and then the lateral agility to be able to help him set up the plays and press into holes and be able to quick decisive cuts and then a good a pretty i think it's a pretty good burst to get through those holes that are then created uh, is is all good traits to be able to tie together and there's multiple instances of him do tying all those traits together on on one run and then again the footwork behind the line of scrimmage to be able to set all those uh blocks up or initial cuts up or to set a guy up to get cut up uh, all those kind of things. And then just to go back to the beginning of this thing is I think the versatility of him being able to run in a zone scheme and the man scheme and, sh- you know, w- with gap runs uh, kind of all encompassed in there. And he did a great job uh, adapting to Jimbo's system in 18. And I think he, pr- he, he fit better in a pro style offense, maybe in my opinion. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Obviously, look at the numbers. I right, mean, it, it and worked on, out really well. On top of this, when you're going to the next level, like what's what's he's probably going to be leaned on is the, I think there is some good passing ability. Now the pass protection on on that 
I think he, it's it. There's. I don't love it. I don't love it all the time, but there are instances where I think that he could be an above average pass blocker. There's times where it's just like maybe he doesn't quite know his assignment. Like uh, the 2017 UCLA game, he at lost the end of that, that thing, game for I, he he blew. He didn't know who he was supposed to have, and he cut a couple of blown uh, pass They're blocks, multiple for sure. But I th- but then there's there's other times at the end of 17 and 18 where he's stepping up in the hole and and making pretty good contact. So I, th- he's kind of 50 50 on pass pro to me. Sometimes it's really good. Other times it's it's not so great. And the times that it's not so great, it's just because I. It's, the, the hands aren't where they're supposed to be or well a lot of times some of the really good backs they're going to go into the league and you're not going to love their pass pro sometimes right. the ezekiel uh, there's not a lot of good college right pass protectors. ezekiel elliott was like the one good running back where he was a really good running back and he was the best pass pro guy in his class and it just doesn't happen that often but i, carry I like on last year prep carry on did come out he, he's got a chin he ain't afraid to stick his chin out for somebody montgomery this year i feel like also but one of the biggest things that i like what you just both y'all just kind of put together there and then casey kind of teed it up at the end there Maybe 18 was his – he looked the best, and it was – he just changed systems into the pro style. And a lot and, – and what Casey said to begin with was really good too because more than likely in high school, we didn't do the high school tape thing, but more than likely he wasn't pro style high school. First could years, have been. I mean, who the Could have been, but My doubtful. My high school still does. Doubt, right. But most high schools these days are spread looking it to out. spread it out. Yeah. First two years, and definitely not from pro Texas, style. So probably – chances Prob- are they're spreading it out. Probably spread it out. But now you got a really good prospect going to the NFL, and we don't have to say, I wonder how he's going to do when he switches to the pro-style offense. Because that's what we're going to talk right. about with a lot of these running backs. To be fair, pro is going a little bit more college rowdy. Pro, so. Yeah, that's a great call with a lot of these five. You, you called it a lot of these five foot ten, two hundreds, you know, and, and there's a lot of talk about. And it's for for good reason the way the NFL is going, and it's a copycat league, and the you know get your running back in space and throw it to him more often. And the Cowboys finally said, "Hey, we'll throw it to Zeke this year. Look mm-hmm. how that works out." Gurley's a great receiver, you know. Just get your running backs, but they're not two hundred and twenty five pounds and catching. You know, not right. everybody's not everybody's one of those big old awesome running backs that can catch too. These two hundred pounders finding a spot they can have a role where where's where's the next alvin kamara coming from right that kind of that type of player but kamara's still pretty big yeah he's not you know, just he's, he's not, not he's five, not five nine, nine two hundred 195 like soaking wet yeah. right, right right so well back to the pass pro to yeah. me that's like my least favorite part of his game you know i don't know if i i don't i wouldn't say 50 50 if you ask me yeah i think it's less than 50 50 it's just there, there are some good signs there are some 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 tape that you can point to and say there's some really good stuff and some really bad stuff but to me he has like trouble sustaining a block he he sometimes get initial contact on a guy but then that guy will will knock him back Mm, Um, fair he he gets knocked back a fair amount he's a small dude there's definitely like a spot in pretty much every game you watch where you can find a misstep but you can also in most games you can find a good pass protection as well that's fair and and to me we've talked about it a lot in the past like Pass protection is an effort thing, and that's that he's, there's no lack of effort. Right, and he, he, he but sometimes has shown it does, improvement. and that's what I think. Sometimes, like it's it's not knowing his assignment on some of these pass protection, and then sometimes maybe it just like we just watched one. I think it was South Carolina where it was just like he, it would look like he was trying to cut block, but it really just looked like he fell over, right, and like it, it caused the problem. It was a limited effort cut block, yeah. and maybe the outside it might have been a slot blitz or something. We just looked at it, and maybe the guy that were either either wide out defensive end coming through, he was probably kind of ready for it. Really, just stepped around it and kind of went after the quarterback anyway. Like yeah. I said, not a very good look for him. But you think that the way everything we've described, the way this guy is as a man, he's not going to let the pass protection right. hold him back. If that's the thing he needs to grind on, he's going to take it and run if with that's it. That's what's going to get him on the field some more in the next level. Then I think for sure. Right. And that's why one of the reasons why if you ask me if I like Travion, I'll say yes because I there are traits that I like about him and the traits that I don't like about him. I think he can improve. Maybe minus becoming a grinder, but that's not necessarily. But he did. He didn't do a terrible job of being a grinder. That's true at Texas A&M. Not, although I don't not, not writing him off. That's not going to be his role. Not only nobody's drafting a two hundred pound guy to be their workhorse. I mean, they I didn't think. draft Lindsey to be the workhorse but, either. But true. He turned out to be a workhorse. So two more questions, which is kind of they didn't have draft Lindsey at all. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> it's true. Just signed him Undrafted. to be good. Two more hey, questions. Just come over here and be awesome Jeez. to kind of wrap this thing up. And one of them is kind of what we're already talking about. Let's just like a general feeling on this player. You like him. You don't like him. And over on the last like eight guys that we've kind of uh been 
watching film on and we're we got damian harris and josh jacobs teed up for possibly the weekend on patreon yeah um, so that, that'll be out early on patreon but we're not quite there yet so we don't want to rush it right uh where would you put let's exclude harris and jacobs so we got montgomery snell justice hill daryl henderson uh who else travion and then travion Rodney and Rodney Anderson Anderson. we're going to talk about uh next um so you're asking me where i would put him in all that yeah, like where? How do you general feeling on him? Uh, you, you like him more than any of those guys? I, I I like him more than Justice Hill. I can for sure say that. Uh, I, I, we we talked about Justice Hill last week. Like what he's bringing to the table, but I, you know, the competition was better for for Travion. The inside running is better. I feel like the vision is way better. There's le- way less dancing. It's all much more right. Uh, just calculated when the, when and the compact. Cut, when he uses the cut, it's. Right, it's for a purpose. Right. Whereas Ju- Justice Hill's like, if I cut enough, I'll get around some people. Right. <laughs> Travion, I feel like sees the hole Watch and sets up the cuts and does it, and and it looks similar, but it seems like less effort. So I'm definitely down to take him over Justice Hill. Uh, whether or not I want to take him over Daryl Henderson, my 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 heart says yes, but my head says no. Like I know that people are going to love Daryl Henderson, and I'm pretty sure he's going to blow up the combine, and it's just going to escalate. Travion could probably, blow it up too. I don't know that Travion's going to blow it up. Travion's not going to go in there and run a four three. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Know. I don't Daryl think, Henderson I don't think goes in, if he goes in there and runs a late or an early four four or a late four three. People are going to lose their minds. People's pets' heads are going to fall off, <laughs> and you know. And then, like, yeah, where Jay Wayne was headed was that with that is Henderson would be a more valuable asset at the moment. You catch it in a vacuum, maybe you right. get maybe get Travion Williams plus for the Daryl Henderson spot, or maybe you're trading back just like we played the sure. Carry On Johnson game this year. Yeah, I we think- figure out where we want to be, and we make we make valuable valuable asset pickups along the way, backing up to something. And I think that's what's going to end up happening with us and Henderson a lot right uh in in drafts depending on landing spot because it could just be ridiculous and not you know I'm doing everything I can to Less get there Niner, if if Kyle Shanahan drafts him or we're, the damn Chiefs we're in or, or the Chiefs right but I'll kind of tie the general feeling and the usage at the next level together like I think I like Travion more as a running back than I like Daryl Henderson. There's way because more there's tape to way more evidence to support at. to say this guy can actually play the running back position right. and maybe be a rotational series kind of guy like uh Henderson Devontae and Freeman and Tevin Coleman, like, hey, you get this one, you get the next one. Henderson, maybe he can do that, but he just seems like he's going to be more of a third down, explosive play, relying on, and sometimes it's going to be a three or four point day, whereas Trayvon, I think, could sit around a, a 10 point day pretty easily with a couple of catches and and a couple of nice runs out of the backfield whereas Henderson you were just we saw this with Rashad Penny last year like the guy Rashad Penny came out ran through some big holes played a bunch of shitbox teams Talent. yeah and not that I like Rashad Penny just fine but he definitely got overdrafted and then got select you know because he got drafted in the first round just ex you know ex, it was just hot fire right blew that whole scenario even up more. So, I mean, we'll see what happens with with Daryl Henderson's draft stock, but Travion, to me, has shown me better traits as an actual running back, and I don't know that the hands are any better or worse with Henderson or Travion. Well, we didn't really talk about the receiving game a ton. We talked about pass protection. I feel like the hands are pretty legit with right. with Travion. Uh, he, he makes it look pretty easy. Well, that's what, him, if, if you're again, like I think I said it. If you're the t- in the two hundo club, you better have some good hands, right? Mm-hmm. And you, so you see him lining up in the slot. You see him getting open, making handsy catches. The sixty six receptions in three years is fairly strong. Um, you like seeing him line up all over the place. Uh, you can see him make a one-handed grab and turn that into something special. Uh, he, and, and he could have had more catches, right? We right. already said that. So I, I I think the receiving game is pretty – it might even be better, I mean, than, than Daryl. They're about the same as far as production went. Uh, but Trevion's in the SEC. So right. there's definitely much more evidence to show that Trevion is a better running back when it comes to, okay, we're matched up with real defenders – playing a real game here, not this super spread out, crazy amount of space, shitbox teams you're playing against, big holes, really fast guy. And I'm not we're not trying to downplay Henderson. We gave I mean, him a little his, bit his due and he's electric, but I mean he's electric boogie woogie woogie. 
So, yeah, and I, th- I think we'll say I'll say this multiple times as we go through because I think there is a lot of these 200 pound kind of guys like I don't necessarily need my running back to be this polished route runner and a, and a, and a great receiver necessarily like I need his hands to be good, but he doesn't need to be this awesome route runner. Um, but if you're if you're 200, I would certainly like to see that mm-hmm. be a thing. Like, obviously, I don't mind seeing check downs go to Daryl Henderson and see what he can do in space or Travion Williams to do in space. Well, he's good in space. So, I mean, I don't need you to be the most polished receiver ever necessarily right. uh, to be. But I, I it just goes back to I'm more comfortable with Travion being an actual Right. So far, I have him at the top, probably of the of the two hundred club. Of the two hundreds, and I mean, a lot of people will disagree. Everyone's in love with Henderson because of the yards per carry and the love the, the yards the, after contact. The the crazy uh, game film of just blowing things up and the yardage is insane and good market share. So, but I like I like Travion a lot, and I'm, right now I'd peg him over. Uh, I'm not going to get into any specific rankings because we are going to talk about Rodney Anderson. And when we get to the end of Rodney Anderson, we'll maybe put all these guys in somewhat of a loose order for yeah. our first six evaluations or whatever. Sure. But I would currently I like him more. But I do agree with you. There is going to be a lot more uh, field value of Daryl Henderson. Of, right. You know, the consensus out right. there is Absolutely. hot. Very hot. All right, well, I think we spent enough time here on Travion. Let's go ahead and hit a break. We'll be back with some Rodney Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. For your pleasure. <laughs> 